Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Cooney, your archer butt, and today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint yourself at home this really gorgeous vintage landscape. This winter landscape is so sweet and so romantic and it has all those little elements that we remember from vintage Christmas cards. Um, it's one of the first ones I've done little people so I'm excited to show you how to do this. I'm going to be breaking this down step by step. To help me do that is my husband John. Hello. He's going to make sure that uh, one of our many robotic cameras is actually pointing at what I'm demonstrating and talking about. I'm going to make sure that I break this down and slow it down so that you can paint along and today we're going to do a little extra thing. We're going to really try to enjoy each part of the painting process. It's a little bit of an experimentation. So like, I hope you enjoy this with me. I'm kind of looking forward to it. Truth is, I kind of need it. It's been a week. <laughs> it's been a real week. How, are you having a week at home? I can't see the live chat right now, but we are live. Oh, yes. Um, John's got the live chat, though. So you may oh. get your question answered during the show. If I don't see it, though, the moderators are there to help and be guides to you about all our resources. 1,800 videos is a lot to keep track of. And um, if all of that still doesn't get your question answered, I am first and foremost a teacher. So leave a question in the comments below and I will, uh, I check my YouTube channel. My son always asks me that every day, every day. <laughs> I check my YouTube channel and answer questions, even on old videos. So that's my motto and I'm sticking to it. About ready to jump on in? I think so. Yes. And this is Harry Potter. If you were wondering. So I did. I pottered up. You have some... You gotta make me small so I can talk about material. The yes. All right. So we have a nine by twelve surface today, and we're starting with ultramarine blue, yeah. quinacridone magenta, and titanium white for the background. And we're gonna make kind of an interesting soft lilac color, uh, which is an unusual winter background, but it's a great winter background. And we're gonna do it with a big wide brush. Let's find a big wide brush. Oh, but mm -hmm. first we gotta step it up need to tell them that this is the first step this is step one in the journey of this landscape this beautiful vintage winter barn vintage win well did you hear me algorithm vintage, vintage winter, winter barn, barn. <laughs> <laughs> painting step by step in acrylic on canvas ideas so <laughs> we're just kidding guys <laughs> we are playing. Sorry. we've been online for seven years sometimes you have little moments <laughs> <laughs> so here we have our wonderful surface and i'm going to use a uh, bright number 26 it's wider than an inch this is a short handle it's got a firm filament for acrylic we're going to be doing long brush strokes going up and down so the first thing that we'll want to do is get our cup of water close to our paint we're going to get our brush a little wet Maybe wipe it off on either the cup or a paper towel so it's not too wet. And let's mix a little bit of a purple here with our quinacridone and our ultramarine. Now I'm going to come over to my white and Why I want a very light lilac. So I'm going to, what? Why were you wiping that off? To keep the water from being too heavy in there. Okay. Sometimes if you get too much water, it gets away from you. And I want to kind of control uh, how much water is in here so it brushes out just right. You know, we want to be just right. And how will you know when it's just right? How will I know when it's just right is a good question. Because like, it's like being the one, John, when you know, you know. No, actually, there's a, <laughs> there's a way to know. Um, what it's going to be is when it's just right, when it's perfect for what you're doing, the brushability on your up-down is going to feel smooth and even. I'm trying to find exactly a purple that I like. You can see what I'm doing is I'm just adding little bits of quinacridone and little bits of ultramarine. This part is actually rather enjoyable. Try to take a moment and pay attention to how fun it is to actually just mix your paint and the way that that feels. That can be very nice. I'm going to dip my brush in just a little bit of water this time to improve brushability. And we're going to take nice, big, long brush strokes up and down. I sometimes feel like mixing paint is like toes and dirt. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of satisfying. So satisfying. Let's really take nice long brush strokes up and down. I add a little more blue to that mix. It's okay if it's got a little bit of streak into it. And I can come along and make sure the edges of my surface have a little bit of paint so it will frame nicely later. Long fun smooth brush strokes it's 
sometimes it can be nice to mix the whole background color up in one foul swoop um, with a palette knife. This also, but by doing it little in little sections, it makes it more sort of brushy. Makes it a little more brushy and kind of adds some energy. I like it. To our sky. I like the kind of um, more. And you know what? I'm going to zoom in on the co on the cross camera because Do that. you can see a lot more of the variation in tones and streaks through here. And that's, you know. Oftentimes that's lost in a wide shot because there's just not enough pixels. There really isn't. And, and you don't want to lose all those good moments. Now I want you to be paying attention to how it feels to mix the paint and how it feels to brush it out on the canvas and really, really just lean into the experience of how it is right now in this moment. We may move that long up and down brush strokes. Listen to the sound of the brush going across your canvas. We're not really, we're not trying to do ASMR, though you could if you wanted to at home. <laughs> we're just trying to be present. Somehow I feel I'm more like a uh, baseball announcer or, you know, a late night co-host slash heckler. See, I think the vibe we need today is Westminster Kennel Club. I think. <laughs> I think Westminster Kennel Club announcer is the vibe we're looking for today. What was the movie? Dog show? Best in show. Best in show. I think I'm probably more best in show. I think I you are too. So just really enjoy taking the brush up and down a long ways. Notice that the brush comes up on one side and I flip it and bring it back down on the opposite side of the brush stroke. My arm's making nice long motions. And that gives me an enjoyable painting experience and my canvas is taking the paint. If my canvas gives me any trouble taking the paint, I may need to add more water to my mix to get it to go. And I'm just going to just... Let that be now. We get to, I uh, see this corner here is a little bit lighter than I would like, so I'm going to brush it up a bit. It's fine because it'll be covered with a little bit of snow and objects. However, that being said, you know, it's nice to do that. Now also take your brush, wash it out, make sure you're pushing the paint out of the brush, drag off the extra water and wipe it on a towel. And that way it'll be ready for you when you need to wash after this painting session. Deep breath, let it out. Let's dry our canvas and we'll move on to step two. Hey everybody, it seems like this has been a pretty nice start to the day. We've got a really nice even background in there. Make sure you thoroughly dry it between the steps. Have a little sip of your coffee, be chill. Remember, you can pause it here and come back later. That's why we put the little steps with the annotation in there. You can always find resources in the link in the description below. And yeah, this is pretty cute. There's traceables down there. So don't worry if you don't know how to draw because you can you can use the traceables to get that in there. It's not a big deal. And uh, yeah, this is actually really kind of cute. I'm going to check out the traceable on this one later myself. Now that I think about it, I like that little tree in the front yard vibe. So hold on. Oh, I got to push your button. There you are. I was talking with them. It's always good to talk with them. You ready to step it? I'm ready to step it. Cool. Step two. Let's lay in the objects on our canvas and get a sense of where they're going to go so that when we paint them, they're in their perfect place and in order. I'm going to use my uh, number four round and I'm going to sketch and paint. I'm going to do this so that you can see the lines easier. You at home, I would recommend using something that was very removable, like the kind of chalk you use on a chalkboard or the Dritz chalk tool that I often use that I have put who knows where today. Who knows where? Not me. I that's okay because I have to do it in paint. I gave you a chalk thing yesterday you or did. day before when we were live. I gave you I my did. backup chalk. I don't know. I keep cleaning the area and I, I overcleaned. Okay. Sometimes you do that I and I'll find a chalk thing. Do you ever overclean? Oh, wait. Here's a chalk bit. I have a chalk bit. <sighs> yeah. So... But oh, I, I ver verbally said it, so you kind of understand what I mean, but John's going to give me something to show you. 
And then we're going to sketch this in together. Now I'm going to describe where I am on the canvas, the direction of my brush stroke, and how it's going to bend and flow through so you can do this along with me. I want you to take a nice deep breath. And we're going to talk at first about maybe the landscape in the middle ground to foreground of the canvas. So if this is divided in half, I'm going to come down a little bit. And I'm going to make a line that goes past the middle point in a downward angle towards the right. right. So it's about here, the side of the canvas. I'm going to also come from a little above my, oh, there you go. No drips, but it's, I got lots of watercolors, so that's good. I'm going to come right here almost to the middle and bring a little slope up. Now from this point, which came about an inch past the halfway mark, I'm going to think a little bit about the road that we might be seeing here that the people are on. I curve that line around and bisect it in. I want it to be fairly wide at the bottom and converge as it comes to the center line. If you don't want to do this part and you don't find it relaxing, we do have a traceable on the website and it is free to download and I have a video on how to do the traceable. I also have, and, and don't, don't scream because I know this is big news. I do have some big news that if you're here for the live today, you get to hear. I am doing the artist retreat with my mother uh, the week before Mother's Day in 2022. And if you'd like to know more about that because you want to paint with me and my mom for about a week, um, you should go check that out. If you would like to be breakfast, lunch, and dinner with me and painting five and a half hours a day, if that is something that seems fun to you. And my mom, Ginger Cook, that's going on. Seats are limited. Yeah, and but this is the refer. I, I zoomed the reference photo in here mm -hmm. because I I didn't have it there and I noticed they needed it. But so you guys no, don't I think, need to worry I think about the paint. I'm using white paint, white paint. So yeah, that's you know. And I can actually also here's what I could do just for you know because needing visual cues, there's nothing wrong with needing a visual cue. Cue. I can come down here and uh, sure, right there next to you. Put some next to me. It won't hurt me. So you can see when I'm getting white paint. Now I'm going to take a tool called a T square ruler. And I will check my reference to make sure that I'm about here. I'm going to say about don't get white on the three and a half inches over. I'm pretty make a pretty line. Um, sweater. Hmm? Everybody loves your sweater. You don't want to put the sweater arms in the paint. I don't want to put the sweater arms in the paint. Try not to. Try not to. So it's about three and a half inches over, and I'm going to again measuring my own initial reference. Casualty about five of inches down. painter from the top to be the top roof. So this would be the top point of my roof. Three and a half inches over, five inches from the top of the canvas. And I'm gonna give myself a little hand here by making a straight line. I like to make a straight line. I'm not, I, I actually was in a department for art and architecture. So you think I'd be brilliant at this, but I am not. Uh, I leaned more into advertising and commercial arts and so some of my architectural skills are a little wonky, but I've got a lot of work around, so it usually is okay. Now, on our roof, I'm going to come down from the top at an angle. Make it a little steeper angle than that. Because what I like to think of when I'm trying to decide the angle of a roof, any roof in general, there's a there's a kind of interesting thing to that. Mm. As you go go further north, there's a a a, a, a steeper pitch to roofs. Um, yeah, that's because snowpack. That's right, snowpack. And I may like as I'm looking at this, I want to move this over a little bit so I have some room to walk my my families through. So I will move and adjust things as needed. Give myself a roof that will drop some snow and try to give myself a matching roof on this side. Now, keep in mind you've got Christmas trees uh, and other snowy pine trees that will be covering some of this. So there is a lot of forgiveness in your architecture. There truly is. Mm -hmm. I will use my T-square over here off this right hand of the roof to give myself a nice straight line to the building. I find that's 
somewhat helpful. You know what's crazy about architecture? Hmm. Is there's always that one person who decides, no, I want to put this completely opposite architecture out here because I'm bored with everything else. Well, that's, so, that's, what, that's why you go get a degree in that. I know. But then all of a sudden you're like, why is there a mid-century modern among all these Victorians? In Texas, where we moved from before we came to Pennsylvania, in the California moderns were all over Houston. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like and they were trippy. We wanted one really bad. I'm going to come across from my right-hand side, and I'm going to, about the middle of my curved roof line, give myself a straight line coming out. And this is for the side building. And I'm going to come down um, about even, say, with the other roof line. And we, we've evened this up, too, during the painting, so that's helpful. But this line's going to come out just a little bit longer than the top of the roof. So there's a bit of a curve there for whatever barn building that we're doing today. Now that I have an idea of what space my building is taking up and where my little mountain hill is coming down, see, just trying to make sure that we have those kind of lines. Now I've got a bit of that in. What I can also do is I can think about my big tree, and I will use my T-square, and I'm going to try to divide the space between my roof and the edge of the left, left, left canvas. And I'm going to make a fairly tall, almost to the top line. This is quite a big tree. That looks pretty good. That's going to grow big and in the distance and be tall. And then I've got three little trees here. So this tree will not be as tall as its friend. I'm going to come down a little further down my T-square. I'm going to start at the two-inch mark from the top, make a little line. And then I'm going to say, oh, coming off the building a little bit, I need a short tree. Needs to be short. Mm -hmm. And then moving my cup over, coming up again, I'm going to give myself... Lining it up with my T-square. T-squares help me just draw straight lines. Little shorter than his friend. And that'll be when I grow them. I've got to just kind of try to see how the stagger works. And so this is a great time to work out the staggering of my trees. Now, in a design sense, if these architectural shapes kind of have a nice rhythm or balance to each other, um, then you kind of know, oh, well, like I'm heading the right way. Right. And now I know I've got a nice big space that comes up here, this nice one here, and a tiny little one I can place here for balance. It really creates a nice beginning. Now, is this a perspective painting? Mm, there is a little bit of perspective work to it. I would say it's very one-point perspective. <laughs> Right, because this is a side building coming off of a front building. But that road kind of... But the, the road gives you a little bit of a perspective effect, right? You know, and then the relationship and the size of the people. So there's a little atmospheric perspective here and a tiny, tiny, itty-bitty little bit of linear perspective. We don't want to overwhelm you with it. Let's call that a step. We don't really need to dry anything, but let's call that a step. All right. Let's see here. And I'm going to put out, um, so I'll tell you the colors that I'm putting out. Okay. So you know what I've got going on. On the tightest capped green ever in the world. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, apparently. All right. And then we'll go over what they are. So you can put them out on your palette too. How are you guys doing? Good. Everyone is, I think, pretty much enjoying this. I've been watching chat, hanging out. Um this is our very healing, restoring um, painting for, for the winter months, just trying to create a little space of calm, you know, where we can. I'm going to put a little yellow over here. 
I'll get to my red later. It's a little bit further on that I'm going to do the red. Take a deep breath. Did we put the step up? We did. Excellent. So now we're going to take, I'm going to use my cat's tongue because I have them and I enjoy them. You could use a round brush. You could also use a filbert brush. <laughs> See the different shapes? Any of these shapes will do this technique fairly well. I just really like my cat's tongue. So this is an Art Sherpa number eight cat's tongue if you have that brush series. But again, you can use other brushes. I'm gonna take a little of my ultramarine over towards my burnt sienna. And I'm gonna kind of mix them into a darker blue color. It's very cool. The burnt sienna kind of grays out the ultramarine. I don't want it to be gray. I do still want it to be a little blue. Right. So I'll check it and I can see there in the underpinning it's blue, but I do want it to be quite dark. Oh, no. Now I'm going to come up from the bottom like a scaling pattern with a pulling teardrop type of stroke. So I'm going to come from the end here and paint the base of the tree. Now I know my hill is going to layer over the top and my building is going to layer over the top. And I may paint out a little of my building when I do this and that's okay. Because I'm, my building should cover some of it. But I have enough information here where I can easily, easily get that. Now I'm going to make a little specific branch where little teardrop strokes pull up, forming that little branch that I'm going to put some nice little snow on. You can always put a little branch out to the side. And maybe I'm going to make another little one here that's very specific. Now on this tree, I'm going to be able to make forward branches and side branches. And you can see it's quite dark. Every time I make a branch, it's going to be kind of tapering into the main tree. Okay, it's There we go. So there's a kind of interesting question. Mm, happy to answer all questions. So uh, you don't use any sort of appliance to help wash your brush on the show. You just dip it in the water and mm -hmm. rinse and go. I mean, there's stuff, there's products out there and they're, they're. How do you keep yours so clean? Um. It, it, and if you got to do the beginner acrylic class, we actually talked about the way you push your brush into the bottom of the cup to open the bristles without breaking or bending them to pull the paint out and then a vigorous rinse up. There actually is a whole technique to rinsing. And, we'll and, and if you're there. like going, there's a technique to rinsing. Yeah, there is. Yeah, we'll put a link to that beginner's course in there. Yeah. yeah that's why we covered stuff like that. Because really, honestly, that those things that you think could be true, they're all true. Continuing to layer these in. This is the shadow tree. The shadow tree. And he's a big boy. I've given myself room to add snow. You know, I assume he has the supernatural voice. Maybe it's the shadow tree. We don't know. We don't know. And then on the toe of my brush, kind of bringing it up to the top. So there, he's got, he's got a basis. He's got a beginning. And I know I'll be bringing that over. All right, I'm going to rinse my brush out. I am pressing the brush firmly to the bottom of the cup, vigorously rinsing, wiping off on a paper towel to check my rinse. And the next color that I'm going to do is, interestingly enough, phthalo blue and white. I'm going to put a little more white out on my palette. And we'll go again over the colors, go around, just in case you're coming in now. I'm wondering what we've got. We've got a uh, Narrate Cat's Tongue Brush. We've got Titanium White, Cad Yellow Medium, Ultramarine Blue, Quinacridone Magenta, Thalo Blue, Thalo Green, Burnt Sienna, and another little plop of Titanium White. Next mix we're doing is a little bit of our Thalo Blue into our Titanium White. 
kind of an arctic blue color. And we're going to be doing a very similar thing. I'm going to do this tree and this tree first and then do the front tree. And that's going to create that look that there's two behind and then the front. I'm bringing in little touching and pull strokes. I have to imagine that the tree has widened out behind the building. So I have to use my imagination a little bit and imagine that it's widened out behind the building and that I'm starting here. And that's how we're going to get those little tree shapes. Now I'm really scaling these closer to the tree because these branches are a little heavier with their snow and have a little detail, less detailing. And I'm zippering up, up the tree to create that shape. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Let's move over here to the far right tree. And we're going to do a similar thing again. Add a little more blue to my mix. Now this is lovely. This is all the way to the ground. So I can pull these brush strokes in heavy. You can see my pressure on the brush is fairly weighted to widen that brush stroke out. Using very little water. Now I know I've got this tree in front. I'll show you the trick of layering that, but we've got to get these two in before we can do this guy. So they layer perfectly. Kind of these little weighted heavy. This reminds me a little bit of the artwork from um, Sleeping Beauty. <laughs> yeah. Similar kind of tree construct. I was looking at a concept design art for trees recently, and it's super fascinating. There we go. That's doing fairly well there. It is. It looks like trees. I don't trees. want that to be all blue. I do want this tree to layer well on top of these trees. So I'm going to paint them fully and then come do him in his own step. I think that's going to be the easiest for all of us. Okay. How are you feeling? How's everyone doing at home? Are you taking the moment to just enjoy the brush stroke? Not be too worried about the outcome. Just enjoy the way the paint feels going on the canvas a little bit. I'm going to reach out with my eyeballs and read the emotion of the room via the emojis. And emojis. say that everybody's pretty happy. Excellent. There's a lot of happiness in here. Excellent. We need to be happy. Need is strong. But it's nice to be happy. It my is nice to be happy. Television eyes say... While I might be not like psychic, but using the powers of technology, they're telling me they're happy. All right. Let's go on to the next step, and we're going to add some white to our branches. Is this a step? Let's call it a new step. Okay. Step four. A little more. So in step four, I'm going to take my number four brush, I think, and we'll see if this works well. And I'm going to get a little of my white over to my blue snow mixture, which was, if you remember, the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna. And I'm going to start making this lighter value. And again, I'm going to be using touch pull strokes to deline branches. But this time, if you'll notice, I'm very specifically piecing out little elements. I want to leave some of the dark part of the tree, and I want to do that so that I've got at least three values, the dark, the snow in shadow, and then the highlight snow. Like right here, I'm going to pull a little very specific branch coming up. 
Got little little values, little shades. So we're leaving some of the tree. Just some of it. Just some of it. And again, this is our snow in shadow. Come here. And then tear up a layer. So the big part is leaving little spaces between that. That's what you want to do. Let's pull. The brush makes a very nice sound when it pulls across the surface. Mm -hmm. That's kind of a interesting question maybe you could talk about this um lindsay was asking why perspectives must have straight lines compared to non-perspectives um well there's a very specific reason for that linear perspective is anything that's sort of man-made and architectural and if you've ever done the box exercise drawing in perspective that does require a vanishing point and the convergence or divergence of lines to help us perceive shape and form. Oh. Atmospheric perspective is about the way landscape looks in nature. So that colors might be desaturated far away um, or saturated coming closer. The way uh, uh, lines become indistinct and soft, but crisper as they approach where our focus is in the ground and the way light affects things around it. So those are atmospheric perspective things. Whereas linear perspective is man built a road. Interesting. Or cut a field or yeah. planted a row of trees. Because we do that. We're so, you know, that's what we do. All right. I'm going to put that four aside and I'm going to go back into my cat's tongue, interestingly enough, here. And I'm going to mix a lot more white into my blue. And I'm going to come and do some touch pull strokes very carefully. I don't try to take out everything. And they might be a little bluer on one side or a little lighter. It just, it all kind of is okay. When I get up to the top of the tree, I'll hold my brush to the side, my num my cat's tongue, and I'll switch to my four. And the reason that I might do that is so that I need a little more paint in there. It's just overly thin. I can do the little details of the tree coming up. See how we're able to get a little detail in that tree bit better? Mm-hmm. Hmm. That looks lovely. It is. Now maybe here at the bottom, the um, blue and white's a little bluer because it's kind of, you know, it's snow. And you can see that the touch pull strokes kind of imply it's a whole weighted <laughs> branch. What? <laughs> Whenever you say touch pull strokes, I think of Jennifer Coolidge and Legally Blonde. <laughs> it's... Uh. Interestingly enough, not Reese Witherspoon, which is usually who people think of in Legally Blonde. Well, she just has that character that does that. Remember that? Pretty fantastic in everything she's ever been in. <laughs> I'm going to, again, kind of switch to my number four as I come up. I can think about how it's looking down here. Even though I know I've got another tree, I've got to put it in front of it. So it's going to be important to um, have it feel fairly full and, and, but not worry about where I'm going to be painting another tree on it. So let's call it a step because we want to dry. 
mm-hmm. to do the highlights. So let's let's dry it, and then we'll come let's put the dry. highlights on the on the trees. So as you're drying, just make sure you thoroughly la- thoroughly dry between the layers. <laughs> and I see that many of you have seen the the, the film as well. So thank you guys. If uh, again, if you need any of the resources, check in the link in the description down below. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all of our patron supporters and our share linkers and the humans who like and comment and subscribe and do those things. They help us a lot. And to all the patrons who help keep our lights on, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so Cinnamon, yes, they all knew who I was talking about. They had the course. bend and snap. They were like, no, it's just that that's it's so funny because. Uh, many people think of uh, for Legally Blonde as Reese Witherspoon, but I love she that you thought She didn't do the bend her. and snap. She did. She taught her that. Oh, did she? she yeah, it was. Oh. Oh, my I, gosh. Am I going to sit there and school you on Legally Blonde? I, see, look, I saw this one a long time ago, and I just. I rewatch periodically when I need to call my soul. There you go. Okay. So. <laughs> I was just like. We're going to put some more snow in the trays. We're going to breathe deeply. We're going to appreciate the way that the values go up and how that feels on our branches. Wait, 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 wait. You're getting ahead. We didn't step, did we? Yeah. No, I don't know. No, that's a, that's you're your talking. that's your job. It's the step them. All right, all right. Before so you I'm going to do me. that, and you're going to heat my coffee while I'm adding highlights. <laughs> okay. I'm going to add a little more white to my previous blue mixture of the dark tree, which again, to remind you, was the ultramarine blue. I'll put you on the, the burnt dark. sienna. I'm using my number four brush. And I'm going to add just a few highlights around the tree. So this will leave some of the shadow um, still showing. But not just the tree shadow, also the snow shadow, right? Because we want both of those things to... Shell. Maybe I use smaller strokes in some parts of it. Bigger strokes in others, just trying to create interest in my tree. Thank you for my coffee. <sighs> Just relaxing, painting the highlights on our snow. How are we doing? Good. I think I'm watching. Let's be mindful of how our brush strokes are placing down and try to enjoy just the way that the paint exits those bristles and goes onto your canvas. As we come up towards the top, we're going to lighten the pressure on our hand and make slightly smaller. Little brush strokes to imply that these branches are tinier than the ones next to them. Now up at the top, I'm going to go ahead and just take a little white and give my little tree a little tip. Looking just lovely today. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to go into my blue and white and make a much lighter color. And come up the tree with another layer of ice and snow. This time I might focus it a little on the right side and say it's maybe perhaps a little heavier over there. Mm -hmm. Bringing that up to the top, looking very nice. Here, I might actually begin to focus it up a little higher up the tree, and that's because perhaps this is a little more in shadow down low. 
Maybe there's only one or two or three little highlights down low. But definitely more focused highlights. I'm going to sneeze. That's okay. You can sneeze. I muted you. Do you need a tissue? No. I can make you disappear. Dust sneeze. <laughs> dust sneeze. I think so. I'll let you know if I need a tissue. Whew. Now, here's a weird thing. Sometimes the sneeze is enjoyable, though. That was an enjoyable sneeze. It was like, oh, I needed that. <laughs> Little tiny strokes coming up, finishing off this tree. See, it's it's got its little little moments there. That's terrific. Now I'm going to do this forward tree, and I feel like I can do it right now in this step. So I'm going to take my number eight cat's tongue and mix a slightly darker blue and white than I had previously. I may paint out a little of my building to do this and that's all right. Sort of more important to overlap just a little bit so that it properly disappears behind the... Yeah, it does create this nice sense of, oh, my tree is, you know, it's tidy. It's Maybe a little bluer. Just a little bit more Icelandic than that, right? Yeah. I'll have to put a little of my roof back in, but I don't mind. It's not really a problem. Now, I can come over the top even now with my number four and a little bit of white paint. Oops, yeah, there's reference. Now, was the reference photo in here the first time you painted this? Yeah. No, I just made this up. <laughs> <laughs> I looked at like 20 vintage cards and was like, I like that. Them little people's cute. And I just kind of created it all up and I pulled a lot of them um, that were either from the public domain or had not had, you know, registration in a bit, even to use for, like, I, I went deep. So this is, this is my filtered version of what I felt a vintage Christmas feels like. And I'll just keep pulling this up. Might come back with some much pure white. Kind of touch the top with that again with little tiny strokes. There we go. Now, I am going to want to dry this thoroughly before mm -hmm. my next layer. All right. So. While she's drying that, I get to chat with you guys and say hello. Thank you for being here with us. It's really nice to see everybody. Um, references, link description below. Told you that last time. Uh, don't use heat. Causes bad stuff. Make sure you're thoroughly dried. Feel free to pause if you need to. You can rewind, watch again, do all that stuff. Please share your painting with us on our Facebook group or on our website or oh, Discord. We got a Discord thing. Maybe we'll we'll link up the Discord uh, chat link in here. Um, I'm not I'm not logged into chat uh, in Discord right now. Normally I try to be, but I was very very multitasky today. So, oh nothing, just talking oh. about stuff. Nothing you need to know about. Really? He 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 he. I'm just kidding. There's, Is it retreat about stuff? Discord. I'm actually excited to be doing a retreat with my mom this week. Oh no, I was the week before about Mother's Day, so it's like it's here for Mother's Day kidnap you all into the event too oh and we're giving away a ticket so oh, you if you could get yourself there but the ticket is a little much um we're doing a giveaway for that and there's information on the 
where you where you get the ticket. There's information on how to win a ticket. And then also, uh, we're doing a meetup. This whole on the disjointed last method of marketing of ours really, really should be turned around. Oh, you don't like it? Oh, no, I think it's fine. <laughs> I just realized we're like, oh, yeah, let's bury the headline of an announcement in the middle of a video that we're doing today live that we didn't rehearse. Well, my mom's mentioning it in her video on Monday, and I, I feel like I should also mention it, so I, I am. Know. I will I tell care. you guys what colors I'm put, putting out so you Wait, know what I'm doing. Wait, you get a step, or are you going to put the colors out first? I'm going to put the colors out first. Give it a step, and then we'll talk about okay, the colors here's all a step. again. Some step tell six. me about the colors, Sherpa. So for the next part, we're going to do the, the um, barn or community center church. It's whatever it is in your painting is fine. I've added cad red medium, cad yellow medium. I still have ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, phthalo blue, phthalo green, burnt sienna. But now I've added Mars black, and I should put out another little bit of titanium white because I'm using quite a lot of that today. Titanium white. Now, I'm going to tip my surface a little bit towards me so I can see it better because sometimes when things are flat, it's very hard to see the perspective on them. And I'm going to kind of adjust my roof line. I'm going to raise it up. Hmm. Going to make it more peaky? I think I am. That's good. I like peaky roofs. I'm going to make it a little more peaky and I might uh, elongate it. And I do know, well, I do know that I'm going to have um, a tree in front. I still want to have a roof I can kind of believe in. I'm just raising the triangle a bit. You're raising the roof. I'm raising the roof a bit. Okay. Now I'm going to come back here. And bring my flat line here and say, here we are, to the side of the building. Nice. All right. And I don't want it to drop down too much. And I'm using my paint. You guys can use chalk. You know, any of that's, you know, pretty fine. And when I'm happy with it, and I can always check my lines, by the way, using a T-square, I can be like, is that straight enough? And then I can kind of come across and be like straight-ish. Yeah. And even use the ruler to help me straighten it up. So that's very doable. Oh. I'm going to get a bright, which is a uh, square brush. I think I will. Hmm, I'll use this one. This is a Textura, which is a very good acrylic brush. Uh, and so I'm going to use a Textura. I'm going to also change out my water. Do you have enough waters? Do you need more waters? Not at the moment. I'm going to get a little of my red and black, interestingly, together. So I'm going to take a little of my black over to my red, and I'm going to shade, shade the red. And I'm going to come underneath my roof line, and I'll be pretty tight into it. And paint that first layer on my building. Because this is where I'll get a sense if I want to change my roof line or anything. Here's where I'm going to want to do it. I'm making a very dark Brick color, very dark red. If your red and black is having trouble covering this, you definitely want to hit this with two coats, but you wouldn't go white underneath it um, to fix it. And I just want to say this, because sometimes uh, we use white to correct for transparency, but when you're doing a dark color like this, you don't want to do white. Mm. You're just going to have to build it up in layers. Now I know that I've got a little hill here, but I still want to take my building down a little bit past where the hill is. Yeah. Right? 
That way when I put the hill in, it looks nice. And I'm gonna use a darker brown red over here so I can put some shading between the two build the two parts of the buildings. All right? Because this is a side building and there's a four building. I'm also, while I'm here, going to get into a little bit of my ultramarine and my titanium white. To paint the first layer of roof. Nice. For the snow. Come across, and I just kind of want nice lines. I use the edge of my brush to control that. And if I go over, it's okay, because the brown will clean it right up. And what's nice is we've got a little buildup of snow on the roofs. So that gives us some forgiveness there. Maybe do a little white and blue. All right, looking at this, I'm checking my roof lines. Yeah. So I'm gonna want these two to be parallel, these two lines to be parallel. That's gonna be important. To make it look level. Yeah, make it look like a roof. So we don't look like the barn raising just was mad planning. <laughs> Just all tippy, tippy. So let's dry this and then come back and do another step. Okay. Drying. The magical world of drying. Where we dry things. That's really it. Just dry it and then come back and we'll have another step and we will enjoy chatting with you because we are speaking in the imperial voice now for some reason and I hope you're enjoying it because I'm enjoying hanging out with you guys so while you get my stream of consciousness thoughts as we sit here live on a show I'll try to oh look she's back I'm back from I'm outer saved. space looking uh, a little crazy right now but look good a minute do, 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 do. so while I'm doing this next part John can you find uh, a middle-sized pouncer because that's how I do the window a middle-sized pouncer? I can do that Middle-sized pouncer, huh? Can I step them first? Step them first and then All find right. that. I think to keep my sanity, I'm going to go into a half-inch angle brush just to have a little more control over what's going on. And I'm going to go ahead and get a little bit of white. It's okay if it's kind of mixed into some blue underneath and I'm going to come up my roof line kind of tapping the edge here and add a nice little bank of snow if I need to I'm going to come down here and I will try to catch a nice little kind of sense of a little squared roof bit coming off there Coming out from the side, I'm going to get a little bit of altering blue, half inch angle still. Make sure that I've got a bit of shading between these two zones. I'll wipe off on my paper towel. I'm kind of almost dry brush down a bit of the snow. See that coming down? I may need to come here to make sure I've got a nice thick application. Use the edge of my brush to make it sharp. So the trick here, right, is that there's a little bit of shadow 
in the snow. Chuck. No, I meant pouncer. Oh. I don't know. We have many pouncers, so I'm surprised that we're... I'll find another way of doing it. <laughs> so we have a thousand pouncers. That one, yes. That's fine. I'm pouncer. I'm just going to use this little round foam to do the wind. I'm going to come here and sort of tap up and down this paint to kind of imply out the snow. See how we're tapping that up and down? <coughs> All right, looking pretty good. I'll let it all have a little dry for a minute. Well, maybe not. Or not a little. Even though I, I can tap the corner of my brush up at the top of the roof. Kind of pile a little more snow up there. All right. Now. Get a little more into my red. It's still got some black tinted into it, so there's a little bit of Mars black in there. I'm going to begin brushing this out over here. On this edge, as straight as I can make it. Even though I know I'm tucking in the building and everything, as straight as I can make it is a good idea. Under the roof line, I might add another little shadow with my black under the roof line you guys doing okay here just enjoy the way the red gets darker and lighter depending on how much we add i'm gonna have to add little windows in a bit mm. right little now windows. we're gonna just keep Creating little shadows under this roof line, I find is very nice to have a bit of a shadow. I'll move my canvas to the side here so I can tuck my brush where I need to. The angle brush gives me a good edge to work with. My good angle can do that. Crystal says she, she loves your hair. Thank you so much. I saw it online. It was called Blue Fire, and I was like, I simply must have it. <laughs> <laughs> Where I live is not a Blue Fire area, though, so it's always very interesting to explain my hair at the salon. One poor horrified <laughs> resident was like, is, is that going to be the color it ends up, or is it like when you have color and then it's blonde? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's there's... The only coloring in hair up here is to cover the gray or make it blonde. Right. And so I think I think it's a thin on the ground. Um, purple. Purple. And uh, and they have the most amazing colorist up here. And uh, so but it was just real funny because because it was really coming from not at all a mean place from a genuine concern place like that mm -hmm. something was going super Did wrong with my head and I was going to be just. You were just didn't understand that she what made a mistake. What was happening to me? <laughs> yeah. Are you going to be okay there, honey? <laughs> and then, so then, we showed pictures of what we were doing, and she thought that was wonderful, and then took pictures for a uh, granddaughter or great niece or something to be like, look at this great hair. We can come here and do that. So it was kind of a wonderful <laughs> moment all the way around. I'm blending more and more red, as you can see, in the building. When I come up to this kind of black and brown area, I'm going to want to soften it. So we're transitioning from a brighter color to a darker color as we go. Right? I'm going to come back over here towards the back side of the building, and I'm going to just brush a little red this way. It's kind of a dry brush. There we go. I'm going to rinse that out. Now, let's come over into our red and get a little bit of our yellow in it. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And then I'm going to come down here on the, in the center of this sort of building. 
and blend and brush in this orange. Maybe a little red here and there. I'm just kind of creating a little drama. As you have, right? Got to have a little drama. You can always shade with a little bit of black. Oh, yeah. It's very nice. It is. It's just a lot of fun. All right. I'm going to add some windows to this, right, for the next layer. So I'm going to dry it. When we come back, we're going to add some okay. windows. Dry, dry, dry. Get it thoroughly dry so you can move on to the next layer. It's looking pretty cool. It's like it just sort of – I like the complexity of the brush strokes. You know how they're all just sort of – I had that's a technical term, but it describes what it is, right? So we get it. It's it's painterly. It's not smooth and even and rolled on with like a roller brush. This definitely looks like the side of a barn. Side of a barn. Not like it was rolled on with a roller brush paint. Right. It looks like a barn side. Just making sure that I'm happy with my lines. Now, do we step them? Um, yeah, you can go ahead and step them. Go ahead. Have a step. I just like to check those things every once in a while, make sure we're good. It's the step between seven and nine. Seven and nine. Seven, eight, nine. Could be. We'll see. We'll find out. So a little trick that I do for this is I'm going to get a small bright. Um, I think this is a good width. Maybe a step smaller. Ha 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 ha. Here is an Archerpa four right so that's a perfect width and i'm going to put in a little window i'm going to mix a little of my cad red and my cad yellow and i'm going to make one window right here underneath the eave and the shape of my brush helps create it All right, so I'll come here and get a little bit of the black on the tip. And L these here. So they have a bit of a sill. Just the stunning part, a little bit of a sill. Come on the corner and just make sure we're good. A little more yellow. I'll just use that brush to give myself a little bit of yellow over there. We're not done, but it just gives us a little start. Hmm. Um, to do, it's interesting to do the center up here what i do is i get into my yellow with a round pouncer you could just paint a circle i just found that this was an easy way to do it let it pick up a little bit of red come to the best of my ability in the center see if i like that and if i do press and twist I got a little more red on the corner there. Come back the opposite way. You can see it sort of just blends on the canvas. Now the trick to this is, guys, you've got to get the sponge into water as soon as you can because you don't want to let it um, dry. And I can come in and, you know, and touch up and... anything I want at this stage. To do any more, I'm going to really need it to be dry, so I'm going to dry it. Okay. So 
So don't think to thoroughly dry that. Yep, oh, she's back already. I just looked over here to chat to see what's going on. And I'm like, boom, she's done. Boom. <laughs> okay. boom. So it's just that I, I want everything to be dry so I can get these more finishing touches on. I can take a little more of my yellow over into my red. Make kind of a very vibrant orange. And at this stage, dry brush. I'm using an angle brush here. The area under my window a bit. I can blend the red into it, but I just want to show like that there's a bit of a glow. We've got two glows. We've got this beautiful little tree and we've got the window. So it's nice to make sure that they're both fit for glowing, fit for glow. For this next bit, um, I think I'll start with a number four round. And I just want a little more yellow in my window. A little more glow to begin with. And I'm going to come back with, again, number four round, a little bit of black and red. Right? very calmly stroke around the window creating kind of sill make a little curve mark in there be nice for later when I'm trying to make the glass it's sort of fun all righty then so Take a small detail brush, tiny, tiny, tiny guys. And thin a little black paint into it. I usually take a drop or two over. You can also buy a uh, fluid paint so that it's thinned already. And I'm going to come into my window and I'm going to make a little delicate kind of circle. It's not perfect. And I do break the line sometimes just so that you know, it's not bad. I'm gonna make a little dot and a little dot at the top, matching versions of them at the bottom. A little scallop, a little scallop. So we're just kind of implying a bit of a stained glass. Now the trick to this is you're gonna wanna really, really make sure that your lines are light, you don't want to be too heavy, or they'll weigh too much to your eye. So in this sense, sometimes less is more. Right, and so we get a little bit of an implied stained glass there, don't we? Come back with my round brush, and I'm going to get a little bit of yellow. I'm going to kind of tap it in some of the glass. Little irregular taps. I'm also going to come and make sure that I've got a little of this on these windows. Because we want to turn the lights on. Meeting place, church, bar, and whatever this is for you in your world, you want your lights on. Because that's what invites you in and makes you feel safe in your painting. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to take a little bit of white on the tip of my brush. Come in the center of this window. And tap out a little bright reflections here and there. And then maybe also just a little bit here. See how very light it is? And some of this will kind of vanish into the snow, but I found like those little focal like light places. Mm -hmm really help you see what's going on inside. All right, it's a step. Is it? It's a step. We're ready to add some snow and landscape that kind of will make this church not seem like it's sieving so much We're anymore. never really sure if this step is happening or not. Because You're never really sure? No. I'm never really sure if my coffee's going to be warm. I don't know why it gets so cold in that corner. Every once in a while, seven eats nine. And it does. Then we have no step nine and we, we get have like no step nine. eight has to do it twice or step 10 has to step in. It's always a mess. It's always a mess. 
Now I'm going to start out with my snow, and I think I'm going to use a little uh, white into that ultramarine. And uh, Where are you working out here? I'm going to come right here. Okay. Uh, still on the house? Uh, no, actually, now we're going to be going from here down. Oh, okay. I'm going to adjust the camera so I can make some things here. Okay. Fluffy. So I'm going to come across here and bring up a bank. And so you can see that that went a little forward into the church I was building, didn't it? Or barn or meeting place. I am not trying to tell you what your painting is. I'm going to take my brush stroke around and I'm going to curve it here on the side to help start implying the road in. Again, I'm just using this nice kind of blue gray snow color. I will dry brush it through here. Nice, long, smooth strokes curving. And then I'm going to get a little blue. Little phthalo blue and start to blend it in. I'm not making road tracks. It should be very loose. Right? You're not trying to, to build a road. Now, coming down the tree and the bank will go forward. And then come back. We're going to Pull our little brush around. There we go. Creating a little bank perspective. I like the bl kind of blue-gray snow because it lets us add bright pops of aqua snow and gives us a lot of differentials. I'm going to paint this kind of loosely over it. It's okay a little bit if some of the purple underneath shows. And I'm going to do the brush stroke along the road edge, curving along it. At some point, I'm going to use my brush stroke to even help me define the way this hill is shaped. But right now, we're just adding a little layer. Now coming back here, I might get, again get a little into my blue-white and I will make sure that I keep that road snowy. Snowy road. Little ultramarine blue there. I don't know what had happened. Hmm? I must have fallen off up there in uh, the supernatural land. Cause yeah. I, I keep... You have been like Castiel like <laughs> for a few weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> I think winter has come. Winter so has that's fallen. What happened. All right. That's looking pretty good. I want to dry that before I do anything else. So we'll call it a step. Okay. We'll, we'll step after you dry. Okay. You dry. Okay. Thoroughly dry it. Make sure you get that done because that's that makes what the highlights coming next work better because then they don't get muddied and things like that. and They layer up real nice. So thoroughly dry between steps if you need to. Pause. Dry some more. Get yourself a snack. Kind of do your thing. Bio breaks as needed. But come back, join us, and finish the painting. There we go. I have a plan for it all. See? Just paint. Okay. I oversimplified everything into just painting. Mm -hmm. Can I give him a step now? Give him a step. Okay. 
Okay, before I start adding trees and things, I want to just check my lines on my building and try to make sure that that straight line and this straight line kind of matchy-matchy somewhat. If I feel like I need to make any adjustments, I'll do that at this stage. Just lining them up a little. Okay, now I've got this little background tree I need to do. And interestingly enough, I had a lot of fun with this. I'm going to use a, you could use a grass comb, a filbert grainer. Um, it was just really fun to use this for a tree. And I'm going to take my phthalo green and my burnt sienna together and make a very dark color. And come right here. I'm going to make a little tree that's just a little bit above the roof line. I'm going to just tap down. Look at this. Tap down. So it's almost like a fan brush. This little distant tree. Isn't that fun? Well, it was fun for me. So I'm sharing it with you. I really love that. You can also just use a little bright or a little hog. You know, because we're just painting this little bit of tree. You can have little specific little branches that are coming out. I'm going to get a little yellow into the mix. Maybe just put a little kind of personality in the tree. Go ahead and rinse out. Get into my like dark snow color for this tree, which again was ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Breathing deep. tap a little snow on the tree hmm. Hmm. nothing i'm just I'm so you can see like you. the little rough edges of this uh, and this is the princeton filbert greener if you're looking for one of these you can find them on amazon and stuff and they're Someone wonderful to saying, have around if you do for anything it has little rough edges lula bell was just like yep i got one of those it's ace it is just the ace right it is exactly right I can always even add a little yellow into to that. Kind of tap a little bit here. Sort of saying that maybe some of the building's uh, light has reflected on the tree. Isn't that fun? Mm -hmm. Now, right now, it doesn't really look like it's in the snow. So I'm going to take a little bit of my brown and blue and I'm going to come underneath. Make sure. back with a little green just making sure that it looks like it's attached to the hill I feel like I could piece out a few more interesting branches that's always the challenge And then come back with a little white. Just making it a fun little tree. Distant tree. Now on this distant hill, I could use um, a hog bristle. I can use all different kinds. But what I want to do is start adding lighter values for the snow, which definitely means I'm going to need some more titanium white. And I do like my kind of ultramarine and brown sort of thing here because it does let me just maybe sometimes uh, pop a little uh, brighter color. I'm going to come here on the edge of this brush. Maybe define a little bit of hill here. I feel like Garth over here. Extreme close up. <laughs> I'm 
you know, I can always kind of come into my little one range. Turn that perspective over. That's very streaky. It's very streaky. You should have little bright spots of snow. You could have little dark spots of snow, but there should be value in the snow. I might even come here and put a little bit of light on this snow. Now that tapping it up and down is glowing snow mm -hmm. and not yellow snow. Glowing snow, not yellow snow. Big difference. Glowing, very big difference. <laughs> I'm also going to kind of load up this brush and come along the building. <laughs> they know what I'm talking about in chat. They do. I know they do. Camera one, camera two, camera, camera one, camera, two. camera two, camera one. A little bit of camera two. white snow happening here. I can tap my little brush up and down if I want to make a little rough kind of patch of it. I'm going to get my cat's tongue, a little burnt, I mean a little ultramarine blue and some more white and make sure that there's a little snow bank starting here. might have a little bit of a right here in the center the beginning of a little bit dark divot which i will get into a little more later but i can tell myself where that's going to be brush a little bit along here Up here, go up and down a little bit. Just say that this is a little broken up snow. Cat's tongue here, but any brush you use, you can break up that little line. Kind of saying that it's broken. You could fluff the line. I'm going to take a, a little bit of the white on my toe and just kind of... There's some little highlights there. And the little track in as well. For the truck in. Got to truck it in. Do you? Okay. Dry everything and then we'll okay. come back and do another step and I'm going to sip my coffee. Just Are you okay? Wow. She just like, she just gives me no time to push the buttons. She's, I think she tests me. Like, I'm going to do this thing randomly, live, without her. I'm going to make you push the buttons. It's okay. I get to heckle her back. So, seems like a fair marriage trade. Right? You know. You agree, right? What? You agree with me, right? I don't know. Do I? I don't know. She's sort of forced to by the rules of being live. You have to agree. <laughs> I don't know. What are the rules? Let's get our grainer again and a fresh cup of water. <laughs> I don't know what are the rules. I don't know any rules. Rules to art? I don't think so. And I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and my white, and I'm going to come here and say... Coming almost to the top of this and tapping down. Let's say there's a little bit of a fun tree here. Brushing from the bottom, the little wide end. See us going? You could use your round, you could use your filbert, any of those techniques will work. You could use your fan brush. These would be all vintage methods anyway, so it's not going to throw off the look of your painting. What size grainer is that? This is the 3 8 grainer. I want to get all the grainers. I really like it. 
good greener. I figured out also you could take a filbert and um, the kind of scissors you use for hair and also trim your filbert to do this too. So if you can't get a greener, you can absolutely make one. Maybe one that's even better than the grainer you came with. <laughs> yeah, I was drinking my coffee there. You got to paint with the grainer you came with. That sounds like a Texas phrase. It really does. And, it, and they're talking about like farming too. Like you're, they're talking about harvesting corn, you know. In the it, chat? No, I'm just teasing oh. you. But I'm bringing course, a little bit of white up here into this little tree. You got to paint with the grainer you came with. I want it to be a lighter color than, you know, the blue underneath it. So it looks like there's just sort of snow. I think my imagination runs away with me. And I think of. I'm sure it does. Jonathan, which is a friend of mine. He's a very cowboy kind of guy. Him and his friends standing out in the field going. Got to paint with the grainer you brought. I feel like that's something they would say. That I know. Like. That's you know. That's why it's more humorous to me is that I you know I see these conversations happening. A little bit of white highlights there. See that kind of just brings that tree forward, right? Yeah. And then I want to take some white, white. Make sure that kind of the left side of the tree maybe has a little more of the snow on it. A little bit of my ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And come underneath here and brush it down. I'm using the edge of my brush. Mm -hmm. You can also uh, finger blend if you need to. I think I'm going to add a little of that right here too. But I am going to finger blend it. Just a little bit of a... Oh yeah. A little shadow casting. A little bit. Might be a little bit much, so I'm going to knock that back some. <laughs> it got some moon glow under it. You know, I want it. I don't want it to be. Yeah. And I can always come back and, and set this again over it. Mm -hmm. And this is where that's interesting because the source of the light kind of is different in all different places yeah and then while i'm here go ahead and grab a little bit of my yellow and my white and show a little bit of that yellow light from that window and also the glowing tree next to it so it's a whole thing but i don't want it to be green which is why what's underneath needs to be dry Yeah, but it's, yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> it's just, this is the shadow we got. All the shadows are going the same way. It just is what it is. It's a card. <laughs> it's a card. <laughs> it's what the, I, I, may, I did it that way first and I'm sticking with it. All right. Okay. You got a road. I, mm -hmm. I, I was not, uh, I did, they didn't hear half my half of the conversation there. <laughs> 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 I'm going to add a little blue to that shadow coming out. Make sure that that's there. All right. Now we're going to put in kind of a bigger tree right here that's going to be a glowing. And we're going to be. That's the one I'm waiting for. Is that I know that's like my favorite. That's the tree. The tree. I'm so excited about this tree. Is really this a seriously. Step it was time? a lot of fun. It's give it a step. Okay. You don't need to dry here, though, do you? Mm -mm. Okay. We can just. You can go to the 12th step of Christmas. There we go. What now, did you bring for me? <laughs> I'm 12 and want some G.I. Joes. 
So I'm going to sit there and say that my tree is going to really center. I don't want it. I want it to center a little off this tree or um, here, I'll center it here where it's point, except I want it all on the canvas. So it'll be interesting. All right, I'm going to just take a little of my green and brown. You can get the black involved if you need to, and you will on some of it. And I'm going to come right here. And this again, the filbert greener, I know. So interesting. Interesting. I'm going to make about a half inch wide little upward space. And then I'm going to come out and do an upward little brush stroke. Get a little bit out. I'm doing the dark shadow of the branches first. Mm. And I'm going to put a little bit of the dark shadow branches in a spot above it. Maybe another little bit one out here. So it's so interesting on this one because you're painting it like almost like a puzzle. Mm -hmm. And you're painting the shadows and then the glow of the tree. And you're still remembering everything principle of the pines about, you know, getting smaller as it goes up and all those things. Let's come up a little bit and you know, make another little nice branch and you can make another little nice branch. Again, all the dark green. Now, I might need to guide myself with just a little bit of a kind of an upward space so I just know where I'm going because sometimes I need to know where I'm going. I don't know if you ever need to know where you're going, but sometimes I do. This is this is the probably the most challenging part of this painting is imagining visualizing the branches in their shadows and then in their highlights. It's really cool. This is like the invisible tree. It is right now. It's, <laughs> it's just, and again, if you need to use the traceable as an anchor, that's okay. Right? That's okay. If you're not here yet, don't worry about that. Because it kind of fills out in, in a few stages and then, and then you're like, what? I'm going to put out a little more white over by my yellow. And I may switch over to the fluid at some point because it's so much easier to use. But right now I'm going to just be like white and yellow. Ah, interesting question. Then it worth from thin it if you need it. Hmm. Question. Is mm. the reason you're going into more detail in the foreground trees than in the background trees is because you're creating depth perspective? Mm hmm Yes, oh. exactly. Good call, Lorraine. This is kind of yellow and white. And we will come back through with another little run of greens, but this is really how you kind of get that. My tree's a glowing. Glowing. It is because it's a glowing.
It's just glowing. It is. And this is, everyone's very uh, inspired by the tree paintings for various interesting reasons, ranging from Christmas tree to Groot. Oh, this is, this would be a very fun Groot scene. You could Groot it up. See, I'm, because all things lead back to Tolkien, I think that Groot is a evergreen Ent. And we've only seen really deciduous Ent in most of the Peter Jackson renditions. But if one were going to be an evergreen end, I think it might more look like root. I'm pretty sure that evergreen ends are canon for Tolkien. I, you know, I'm sure that, man, there were so many books. All right. Like, so I want you guys to see this where it's at at this stage, because this is the core of the layering. You don't need to dry or anything, but this is where you kind of need to be. You need to have your little kind of stacking of glow and branches, right? That's going to be kind of coming up and doing its thing. You're building up the glow. Building up the glow. We're building not stepping. up the glow. So step it. Oh, we are stepping? Yeah, step it. Because I want is... them to get this and then get the finishing work. Okay, so this is just going to be kind of a half step, but you're going to have to make a big jump next because, you know. Oh, yeah, I know how it is. You know how it is. There's just, you know. Because I'm so weird about that. It is. We're just going to jump here. From, from this right. next place. I'm going to add a little yellow to my um, green and brown over here. Adding a little bit of that. Kind of coming up above the shadows, sort of filling it out. You could add a TARDIS out front. You could soup. This would actually <laughs> be a really boom. good TARDIS campaign. Be a really good TARDIS painting. Just drop a little TARDIS right out front. Weeping Angel. People would never know. They'd be like, be like <laughs> actually, who gets afraid of painting Weeping Angels because their rules about even an engraven image of them can make one? Whereas I want to put a few in the backyard. Just <laughs> because you're mad at our neighbor. No, just because I <laughs> wanted them. It'd be awesome. <laughs> You know. All right. That's a a lot little of more of our dark green. Right? A little more of our very deep, deep dark green, which is our burnt sienna and our thalo green. And if it's not dark enough, we have to sometimes add a little black to it too. We got a little quarter acre out front. It'd be great. Put a put a phone box and like three angels that move around periodically. That'd be fun. All right, so you see I'm adding little flares off the trunk. And then we're going to come here and kind of bring a little dark value. So it's just about this layering of the tree. I'm getting a little fluid. The reason I'm getting a little fluid on my brush, and you can kind of see it here, about that much, is just so that this flows off my... Show that again. Well, I can't really because it's oh, already as wet as it can be. But okay, but that's what you did. I didn't see the... You just didn't bring it forward enough there. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me know. So you're just creating a little bit of interest in the tree. You just need to create a little bit of interest in the tree. Very interesting. And it really is in stages. Yeah, wooden style Cyberman. We could make a have a little Dalek. They could cruise up and down the road periodically on a on a 
RC cycle. I mean, See, the community's into the ITI. I, I'm, I'm up for it. If you're wondering, am I up for it? Yeah, I'm up for it. It definitely is an up for it. Now, I don't want to go to a whole new step, but I do want to dry. Okay. If anyone has a lead on mannequins, you can uh, send me a PM. We'll see if we can make that happen. Get a lot more white into my brush, and I am going to get a little a little moisture into it. So you guys just oh, that there much. We go. That's what we needed to see. Okay. A lot more white. I may actually put out my fluid, guys, mm. just so I'm not fighting it the whole... You can see the difference is so big. Sometimes that's why I keep what that was was golden fluid acrylic titanium white. It's ah. just bottle paint. Neato. But it's really good bottle paint, so. You can see this gives me just that extra little bit of glowing highlight in the tree. It's a glow. Just little flicks there with little that grainer. Little flicks here and there with the grainer. Just building it out. Let's see here. Coming up to the top, getting a little... Th and I can always go back into the yellow. Right? Just right into that yellow. And put a little bit of bright into that. Now, what is what I do want is to make sure that in the center of my tree that I have, you know, a defined set of branches. So I might go back into my dark color. And just make sure that it has, you know, dimensionality. Now we just build it, build it, build it. Now underneath it, you know, I really like to make sure that the stem is like really good. Especially everything under here needs to be, and I'm using just my black and green here. It's very sure. fluffy. Very shaded. Okay, if some of these come out small opposite way. Let's get, um, I'll take my cat's tongue. And I'm going to come underneath with maybe a little bit of that altering blue. I kind of glaze back and forth. Yeah, because it would definitely be impactful. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to get a little bit of my snow snow and kind of come around here. This is really nice. And kind of circle Oops. this a bit. It's like Just a bit. There you go. And I can just make sure that it's got a nice little divot that it sits in. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're seeding it. It's kind of what we're thinking about doing. We're just thinking about the seeding. 
And you can always come back with a little little glow on the snow here. Because it would have a bit of it, right? Yeah. Coming out from the tree. It's very, it's a very bright tree. All right. Now here's the cool thing. We're going to actually use a wet Q-tip to do this next part. It's kind of fun. Um, I don't think we need a whole new step. So I'm going to well, just. This is, you're going to do the little ornaments now? Yeah. We may as well. All right. Step it up. Yeah. That way they can, you know, because this was a lot of the. the, the um, Build the tree. Building the tree. Building so now the tree. Step 14. She'll step be 14. decorate the We're tree. We're going to decorate our tree. <laughs> and so I'm going to, I took a Q-tip and I'm going to twirl it in the direction of the spin so that it stays tight and it's twirl. wet. And I'm going to dip directly in my CAD red. And I'm going to press down a few places. And again, it's wet. So what it does is it makes a little kind of ring, if you can see. Yeah. It's kind of a cool effect that I was like, oh, and this is really cool. Because when you've done a gazillion DQ tip paintings, you learn Ooh. some cool Q-tip tricks. Yeah. I'll get the other side a little bit wet. Put a little phthalo blue on it. All right, put that aside. And then we're going to take a dotting tool. We've already got the fluid paint out. I'm going to take the small dot, come in the center. of all these little twinkle lights, the little ornaments that are glowing. Ah, uh, glowing. It is glowing sparkled. It is. You can add little glows anywhere you want. In the tree. You just want them to be in your ornaments. They're not really ornaments. They're more like lights. Little lights that are a glow, and they're colored lights. And then we've got the rest of the tree with like interior lighting where it's all glowing. And you have this all glowing. And then I can take a little bit of, I'll use my bright hair, a little bit of my ultramarine color here. And oh, that's nice. Just have that be just a little bit there. Just a little bit of a hint of that happening there as well. Because you never know. You never know. Anyway, you don't know. Guess what? What's that, Zat? We're going to do the peoples. The peoples? Peoples. peoples. Now, peoples are a step two. Peoples are their own step. Because people step. Because people step. And Step 15 is the peoples and your teeny tiny little brush. Now, your so. reference has no peoples. It's peopleless. That reference has them, but your other reference. Oh, look, you're starless in the reference and sparkleless in the reference. I you sent must, you the wrong reference. You must have gotten, like, I got the step before the step. <laughs> I sent you the wrong Look at that. So this is where we're going. Uh-huh. That is where we've been. Okay. We're going here. We so, were there. That's what's at. This is where you're heading. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to. So stop here. This reference <laughs> is what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it and watch. 
I have some magic tricks. Okay, to but if that's what you wanted to do, you stop here. If you wanted to add people and other things, you've got to continue on with me. Look at this. I'm going to shrink this down into the You're zero amazing. space. And I'm going to make it useful. All right, we'll cut back over here for right now. But I'm going to make this disappear, and I'm going to use this other one. All right. So I've got a detail brush. So little. And I get a little bit wet. And I think I'll start with my red and black over here. You know, they kind of already got going. Not this one. This one. And up here, just at the top of the road, I'm going to make a little teeny tiny head. It's a dot, really. See, this is a big difference. It went from Stephen King to, ah, people. I didn't know it had a Stephen King file, but okay. Well, I mean, you take so, the people away and it's like, what I'm happened bring down in this a little Midwest bit town? of a line to the ground from the dot. Right. And then, and this is like just making sure it's thin enough to really come off your brush, right? A little bit thicker under the little dot. And then maybe a bit of a touch out for an arm. Just the smallest separation there. Right? And then come here. Right there. This little dot perhaps will be bigger. But this one right here. Oh, got a little big. Much bigger than I wanted. So I'm going to erase. CP had a much more reasonable explanation that they were all inside. They oh. were already in the midsummer building. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Anywho, I so went, I guess I, I guess this is winter. The... This is their winter festival from that midsummer crowd. No, it's not. It's a very happy festival. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna bring. Uh, There's nobody in a wicker man anywhere. I'm gonna bring a little arm forward. These are just barely implied. That's the trick of this. Just you just barely, barely want a thing here. The leg kind of comes down in a taper. Mm. Now, if you're having... since I had a boo boo, I'm gonna make a little scarf go off. Let me ask you, that's a good good point here. So if you have a little bit of a shaky hand, how would you suggest for these little detail-y people? Toothpicks. And use some type of stabilizer like a bridge or a mall stick. Oh, that's a good suggestion. All right. Now, this guy, he's going to be blue, so I'm going to go get my dark blue. And I think we're going to put this person a little bit in front of the other person. Person, person. Maybe a little bit of a kind of bold line there. More of a thrust back leg. Aha! -ha. A bit of a forward leg. Just touch down a little bit until I'm happy. Sometimes I have to get a little dark. I'm going to put a little black on that forward leg. Maybe a little bit there too. Front to face. I can't tell you how little actual people are painted. Now my favorite part is the little family. So little family starts again, uh, black and red over here. And that's going to be the tallest member of said family. Mm. 
going to go all Invader Zim. The tallest shall be in charge. I didn't say the tallest was in charge. I just said this is the tallest person in the family. I just I'm, I went Invader Zim. I know you did. The tallest. Bring down a little kind of rectangle. I'm almost making carrot people. If you know, you know that reference. Just making little carrots with dots on top. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, a little a little scarf coming off because you know the scarf jaunty carrot. fashion. Gonna have to add an alouette, or is it blown away? And two little arms coming forward. This one could have a little bit of a bend to it, I think. Little at like little distant people are kind of fun. These are almost bean men. If you've ever done bean men with me, mm -hmm. <laughs> very very useful use of bean men is here. <laughs> okay, now I'm gonna do the next one in black because I'm gonna highlight it with green. Next person's in black, and since I have this. Scale, I'm going to come to the shoulder. Also a scarf. A little bit, a little bit forward leg as well. In walking, you know, just doing. And my very, very favorite figure of the whole thing <laughs> is my little letter K. So up front, smaller than the other three, is a little tiny dot. Curves off the back. We got this. You can do this. <sighs> One little arm forward. One little line back. One little line far forward. It's like a little letter K. Too much water in my brush and it did that drop thing. You know the drop? The danger drop? It did a danger drop on me. All right, so we have the beginnings of maybe some people, weird little people, right? So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to come into your blue. You might want to look overhead, John. Okay. I got to look overhead. Look overhead. I'm going to tap in a little trail of footprints. Little trail of footprints. Uh-huh. People be walking. When the trail of footprints is there, I come back with, believe it or not, a little of the fluid white to make little highlights in the snow that they've disturbed. Isn't that fun? So you're highlighting the trail. I think it's cool. Little dots up and down. And again, once we... Oh, man, that looks cool. Once we get a little snow going, then that's just real fun. Okay. So we have little trails that are highlighted. Now we need to give each person their color. So I'm going to come back here and get a little red on here. And at the back of the head here, I'm going to touch a little red and a little bit on the scarf. Ah. 
Heck of the jacket. Heck of the pant leg here. On arm. Highlighting. See? Just those little those little touches. Another little visitor in red parka gear. There. A little bit red. Just ring can have a little touch, but not does not need that much of a touch. Then we've got uh, blue and white. And also our little K down here is a bit of the blue and white. And then just to change it up, one little green. Just the back of the jacket, some. Mm -hmm. Just some. So just some. Then you can even It's away from me. I can figure bling it, blend it down. I just want a little smidge of it, you know? Mm -hmm. They just have a little shot, like little, little effects. All we're saying is that they, these little figures have an effect in the world. Right, just an effect in the world. You can um, hit one final highlight if you want to on some of them, like you can add a little mm -hmm. orange, and it can um, definitely increase dimensionality on a few of those figures. It doesn't take a lot to kind of pop the interest. I like them very much. And you'll get a sense of it. You'll be like, oh, that one has its its hands in its its pockets. Or, you know, you may have a very specific person in your life that you're thinking of when you do these. You may have no one that you're thinking of when you do these. I don't know. <laughs> but that's our little figures walking in. All right. <gasps> that's a step. Let's dry it. All right. Let's dry it all you the way. You surprised me. I didn't think we would have another step after this, but let's go. Let's go. I did. You oh, did we got too many steps. The stars. Ooh, too, I see. We gotta go, do. We yeah. gotta do the. We gotta twinkle and in snow. You and go ahead, dry. I got. I just was. I'm. I'm. I couldn't see the sparkles through the trees. Is what happened there, and I think I've also been staring at the other reference photo for so long that I just it's like, you know, I didn't see it. But that's coming next. The tree, the the, the stars. Got to put the stars and the big. You know, that's what makes the magic sky magic. So, sky magic. Magic sky magic. It's magic sky magic. Stretch 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 magic. Okay. <laughs> I'm ready for there to be more fire magic. All right. So this is a chalk pencil, um, and I'm switching. From this to this, just because I want a more precision line personally, and I'm going to use my T-square. Whenever I've been painting with my T-square, I always run my hand along it just to make sure I don't have hidden paint. And I'm going to come above my uh, little building here and just, just slightly off center from the roof. I'm going to make a little vertical line. And then about halfway in that, I'm going to make a little... Hopefully, fingers crossed, horizontal line. If ever I'm not sure of my square, if I feel like my square is going out of square, then I can always kind of come back from opposite places. 
So that's just to help me keep a steady, steady line when I'm painting. I'm going to take my fluid paint and my detail brush. And try to paint, and I may have to move it on John. I may have That's to move here so I can get a good steady line, John. It's all right. I'll let you find me. There we go. So I turn it to the side because I have a directionality for which I pull a steadier line. I have a lot of other things I could do here. I could do tape. Sometimes tape's a good way to steady a line. Where are you? And I went off steady there. Just do your best. I just do my best. You just do your best. Sometimes I turn it upside down so I can look at it. Just the twinkles. And the diagonal twinkles. No. Coming back around to the top, and I'll let John find me again. Good enough. I'm going to take my dotting tool. And I'm going to go ahead and specifically dot in the background for a second before I splatter. Just kind of around randomly. I like it very much. And I'm going to take my splatter tool, which does look a lot like a toothbrush. And I'm going to load it with a little bit of this fluid pit paint, tapping up and down. And I'm going to very carefully flick a little bit of snow onto my snow scene. You can have a lot of snow, a little bit of snow, no snow. You can mask parts of your building off from snow. Like if you're like, oh, I don't want anything on here or there, you can absolutely do that. I actually rather like the snow. I like its effect Very on nice. the color of everything. Kind of desaturates it when you uh, add the add the layer of snow. It actually does desaturate the color. Now, what was that dotting tool thing you were using? That's part of my Galaxy set. I don't know how much longer these will even be available out there. And it, it is a whole set for creating stars and galaxies and sea foam and splatter techniques. It's got two splatter tools, a detail tool, and a dotting tool. Um, and uh, you might be able to find it still at Jerry's or the Brush Guys or on Amazon, um, Jackson's or King's or, you know, uh, uh, Dick Blick might still have. So just, like, look around. You can just search the Art Sherpa brushes and, uh, and go Ooh. under shopping, and it should pull you up to it. I don't know how much longer they'll be out there. Super good question. Mm. So we'll be over here and... Girl Attack asks, why? First of all, love your name, Girl Attack. So why, if I splatter, does my paint disappear when it dries? Are you, so there's some sort of structural induced discoloration that's happening. It could be that your splatter is very transparent. And as it dries, it thins. And that's causing it to vanish, at which point your fix is to get a small bottle of even this. Um, fluid acrylic, like they have the little tiny little two ounce bottles. Pigment load. Yeah, and it may just be that the pigment load is too thin. It could be that you're using a gouache or something, and then that is also it's not it's not by, bound the way acrylic is, and so pigments could be getting up in there. Yeah. But generally, it's it's something in the pigment load. That's so so snowy. Yeah, I want it to be super snowy. It's so nice and snowy. So nice and snowy.
All right. Once this is all done, I can come and just take a little bit of my... Uh, yeah, you can find things like our dotting tool for nail dotting tools. Yeah. Amazon. Yeah. yeah. The whole sets, and then also then you can do dot art. Um, so they're a good investment. I have one in my set because it's part of making galaxies or stars or seafoam or a lot of different things, and I didn't want to have a, a splattering set without it. But yeah, you can absolutely buy it um, on Amazon. Big kits of them. You're getting ready to sign? I'm getting ready to sign. I'm just picking oh, a color. I think I'm going to do my ultramarine blue. So I just want a color that I can see but is in the painting. Tomorrow we're going to paint a train based on Clarence Gagnon. Oh, yeah, that's The so Canadian cool. Impressionist, part of the Canadian Impressionism School. I wanted to make sure that I gave our Canadian viewers a little kind of like heads tip of the head kind of stuff this season so it's gorgeous it's just a neutral train snowy landscape so if you just wanted something that was just a winter landscape it is perfect it will be at one o'clock one o'clock tomorrow and i hope you'll come i will be here uh it's gonna be on the same size canvas is it what size mm -hmm. canvas is this? nine by twelve nine by twelve i didn't ask that earlier you probably said it i think i said it but you know it's I hope I said I hope. it. I hope. I hope I said it. Oh my goodness, guys. This was a day. This was a good day. I, I have not done some of these things before. I haven't taught this style of tree. There's some things here that were all really new, so I was excited to share this with you. The Vintage Project has asked me to go into some interesting spaces. I'm working on coming up. A uh, tip of the hat if you guys are fun fans of fungi. Mm-hmm. There's a whole historical okay. um, fungi kind of, or fungi, fungi, fungi. Well, because some of them are happy and good, good, good you know. But, but the reindeer yeah. eat some poisonous things and they get high, and then that's no, maybe the or maybe some sort of relationship to the origin myth of Santa Claus in oh, yeah. Norwegian mythology. So yeah, that whole thing's cool. So I've He's got some vintage stuff inspired from like inspired from vintage art that was like tipping the hat at the time to all of that and i think you guys are going to go bananas for it i could be wrong i might be alone in my live stream you might be like no we've moved on you've mushroomed too much but i think you're gonna like it. it's gonna be fun it really is that'll be coming up uh over the next week um and i hope yeah. to see you for the train for sure so chill so lovely so lovely so lovely and i can't wait to see your version of this terrific painting yeah good to yourselves be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.